Plastics have been in production for less than 100 years, and yet they are everywhere. It's in the products we use, it's in the clothes we wear, and it's wrapped around the food we eat. Wherever you turn today, there's pretty sure to be a modern plastic in use somewhere within sight. Plastics promised us convenience, but have ended up overwhelming us, choking our natural world, harming our health, and accelerating the climate crisis. So how did we get here? And how do we get ourselves out of this situation? After the first experiments in the early 20th century, plastic production began at scale during World War II. From a modest yearly production of some 25 million pounds in 1927, the industry swelled to a total of 650 million by 1943, a gargantuan increase of 2,600%. However, it wasn't until after the war, when industries began looking for alternative markets for their new materials and processes, that plastics really arrived in the lives of everyday consumers. Plastics take their rightful place in a world at peace a world dedicated to a richer, fuller life for all. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, this new wonder material was heavily promoted, promising convenience, cleanliness, and durability. Plastic, it was claimed, would revolutionize the production and availability of millions of common products from cars to cutlery. The future will bring plastic fabrics wondrously fine, yet resistant to wear, wrinkles, and stains. Plastic houseware made from polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene. The brightest stars in the plastics industry, an industry that did not exist 25 years ago. In the decades that followed, driven by the chemical manufacturers and fossil fuel producers creating the raw materials, plastic became a ubiquitous and often inescapable part of our lives. As the use of plastics spread to packaging and single-use disposable items, the dream of this wonder material became a nightmare. Plastics would never degrade. They would never break down. They would leach chemicals into our air, our land, our water systems, strangle and choke wildlife. Plastics could never be thrown away and would instead be sent to countries without the infrastructure to properly process it. As waste plastic degraded into smaller and smaller microplastics, they would be found everywhere, from snow at the South Pole to the blood in our bodies. We realized too late. We were drowning in plastic. We are told that there is a way out of this crisis. We're told that we can recycle our way to a plastic-free world. But this is a lie. The truth is that the fossil fuel industry is working hand in hand with big brands like Coca-Cola, Nestle, PepsiCo, and Unilever to continue to push massive amounts of single-use plastic into the world. Plastic pollutes throughout its entire life cycle. From the moment it is created, it impacts our environment, supports the fossil fuel industry, and accelerates the climate crisis. We need to turn off production. This is where the Global Plastic Treaty comes in. Greenpeace, together with our allies and supporters, is demanding a strong Global Plastics Treaty that will limit plastic production and use and ultimately end single-use plastic. We demand a treaty that will keep oil and gas in the ground, hold big polluters accountable for their excessive plastic production, build refill and reuse systems, and ensure a fair and equitable transition for affected workers. The Global Plastics Treaty has the potential to be one of the most significant environmental pacts in history. And together, we will make sure that it delivers on its promises. We will show how an unstoppable global movement will achieve an ambitious treaty that will turn off the plastics tap and finally end the age of plastic. for our communities, for the climate, and for the planet.